video on financial maths, I'm going to be deriving the amortisation formula. This is a required derivation on our course, so you do have to know it, and it can be asked as a standalone question on your exam. You might remember that the amortisation formula is commonly used in relation to mortgages, and the formula is on page 31 of our log tables. And just to remind ourselves how it looks, it's A equals P times I bracket 1 plus I to the power of T over 1 plus I to the T minus 1. And A is the monthly repayments and P is the principal. So when the mortgage is taken out from the bank, P represents the total amount of the mortgage. And then A is how much you're paying back every month. So obviously a mortgage was on for a long time. So time is passing and we're keeping making repayments. And those repayments are all in the future. And what the key to the amortisation derivation is, the key piece of info that you need to know, is that the principal is equal to the sum of the present value of all those repayments. So that means for this derivation, I need to go back to my log tables a couple more times. First of all, on page 30, I'm going to be using this present value formula. So present value equals future value over 1 plus i to the power of t. And I'm not going to call present value p here. I'll just call it present value to avoid confusion with p for principal. Now, I know that all of these future payments are the same. So the f isn't going to be changing and the interest rate won't change over the duration of the loan either. So i is going to stay the same. All that will be changing is the t. And since I'll be adding a load of these up and all that will be different from each one to the next is the t value, then I'm going to be looking at a geometric series. And I'll be trying to find the sum of that geometric series. So we'll be back to the log tables again on page 22 this time, and we'll be looking at Sn for a geometric series. So we'll keep our eye on these two formulae. And the job now will be to take my individual repayments, I'll be calling those A, and work out each of their present values, and then take those and add them all up using the SN formula. You might want to pause the video here for a second while you make note of these key pieces of information and this statement before we go on to look at the derivation proper. Okay, so we're ready to go. The first repayment in a mortgage is generally made one month after the mortgage is drawn down or the loan is taken out. We can write the present value of this repayment as a over 1 plus i to the power of 1. Our next repayment is made on the second month, and so we can write its present value as a over 1 plus i to the power of 2. And this continues on until the end of the loan. And as I go along, I'm adding these individual terms up then and letting them be equal to p. And I'm not going to write in every single individual term in the series. I'll do a dot 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 to show that it goes on for some time. And then I'll fill in my last two terms. So pause the video here and do that yourself. So my last entry will be a over one plus i to the t. And the one before that, so a month earlier, is a over one plus i to the power of t minus one. And the principal or the entire value of the mortgage is equal to the sum. Now we saw in earlier videos on installment savings how this type of question is made a bit easier by reversing the terms. So I'm literally just starting from the end and writing it in the other direction. Now, I'd just like to point out that this reversing the order step isn't strictly necessary, but it will make the algebra later on so much more straightforward. So I highly recommend it. OK, so I'm now going to use my sum of a series formula on this information. And that means that I need to identify A, which is just the first term in my series. It's pretty easy. I need to identify R, which is my common ratio, and then N, which is just the number of terms in the series. So there's my first term. I'm calling it A. And to get from one term to the next, I'm going to have to multiply by 1 plus I. So that's my R. And then N is equal to T, because as we saw in our first iteration of this, there are t terms in the series. And now we'll take all this information and fill it into this formula for the sum of a geometric series. A quick tip before we start. The formula that we're using for the sum of the geometric series can be written as a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And this, believe it or not, will actually make it significantly easier to manipulate 
what I end up with for the sum of my series and to make it look more like the amortization formula. So again, I highly recommend doing this. Okay, so let's start subbing in then. The first thing to note, of course, is that what I'm working out by getting the sum of all the present values of my payments is actually the value of the mortgage, which we're calling P. So P is equal to A over 1 plus I to the power of T multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus I to the power of T over 1 minus 1 plus I. And just notice that every time I put an R in here, I put a bracket around it because R is 1 plus I. So I want that entire expression 1 plus I, for example, to get put to the power of T and I want to be minusing that entire expression as well. So let's just take a second to look back to what we're aiming at. So we're aiming for this formula here and comparing it to what we have so far, you can see that I seem to have most of my ingredients. I've got the P that I need, I've got the A, and I've got a whole heap of 1 plus I to the power of T's. In fact, I've got a bit more than I want to end up with in the end. So I'm going to have to just take this line and tidy it up a little bit with the goal of making it look exactly like the formula from the log tables. But it looks like we're off to a good start. We can see in the log tables formula how A is by itself on the left hand side of the equation. So I'm going to try and isolate A in this equation also. So I'll leave A where it is and I'll move everything else across to the left hand side of the equation. And if you feel confident now doing that yourself, then by all means, pause the video here and off you go. And then you can play and see how you got on. Don't forget that anything that's in the denominator over here is going to end up in the numerator when it moves to the left. And anything in the numerator is going to end up in the denominator. So let's see how that should look. So first of all, the P is going to stay put. And then in the numerator, I'm going to have 1 plus I to the T times 1 minus 1 plus I. And in my denominator, I'm going to have 1 minus 1 plus I to the power of T. And there's A by itself over on the right hand side. So now this is a bit of tidying up over here. And the obvious thing to tidy up first is this bracket. And there's no powers inside here, so it's nice and straightforward. I leave everything else alone for a minute and just edit that. So I'm literally just multiplying the minus into that bracket and I'll have 1 minus 1 minus i. And this is quite nice because I can just cancel out those ones then. So with that done, I've ended up here. And it's just interesting to note how close this is to our final answer. Let's have a look for comparison. So I've got P at the start, that's fine. I've got 1 plus i to the power of t like I'm supposed to. I've got an i on top. I want an i on top. It's just that this guy's negative and I don't want negative. And then on the bottom, I've got 1 plus i to the power of t, which I have here. It's just that it's negative. And I should have a negative 1, but I've got a positive 1. So at this stage, it appears that all I need to do is make a quick adjustment to some signs and I'm there. And to achieve this, all I'll have to do is just multiply the denominator and the numerator by minus 1. And once I do that, I'll have p times 1 plus i to the t times i on top over minus 1 plus 1 plus i to the t equals to a. So then just a little bit of rearrangement and we're pretty much there. I'm just going to match the original formula exactly by putting the i first and swapping these two terms. And we're home and dry. And just to be 100% sure, let's compare it to what we were aiming for. And you can see that the two formulae are identical. So in conclusion, just remember that when we're trying to derive the amortization formula, our key piece of information is that the principal equals the sum of the present values of all future repayments. That, that means that we'll need the present value formula from page 30 in the log tables and the sum of a geometric series formula also.